Video 298 of the Atomic Ivy MMO, Simpler Auto Tile Shader Part 18. We're making an MMO in JavaScript. Let's go over some of the new additions. We've added a function called assert power of two, and we really should kind of figure out where we are here. Yeah, we're in the function boilerplate, so let's highlight this really quick. So within this boilerplate section, we've gone down here and we've added this assert function directly beneath the main generic assert function that we use all the time. And this is an assert function that is going to throw an error if the number inputted is not a power of two. Is zero a power of two? Uh, I have to think about it, but for our cases, we're just not gonna assume, we're gonna assume zero is not a power of two because we can't really do anything with a texture that has zero pixels in it. So zero is going to be an error. This is our optional error message, and if the number is not positive, we're gonna throw an error, because we're dealing with textures and they should have a positive number of pixels. The texture should be a 32-bit number, right? Like if the texture, if, if our bitmap is bigger than the number that can be expressed with 32 bits, we, we got some type of problem. So we're going to assume that we have a 32-bit number. And if we don't, we're going to throw an error. Here is the number of bits that are set. Only one should be set if it is a power of two. Here's the actual bit index. So we're gonna loop through all 32 bits of the integer. And if we detect a set bit, we're going to increase this number here. So we take the input number, we do an unsigned shift by the actual bit index, and then we mask out with a, a binary one, right? And that'll give us the value of the current bit we're iterating over. So we're iterating over all 32 bits, index 0 to 31 inclusive. And uh, this math should give us the bit at the actual bit index we're looking for. And if that value is non-zero, so if it's non-zero, then we have a set bit and we'll set the bit. Okay, and now if the number of bits is not equal to exactly one, then we don't have a power of two, and we're going to throw an error. And we will return the original number just so that we can chain together function calls if we really want to. I don't know if we'll use it that way, but we'll add that anyways because it can be nice. Here is our downscaling function. I know the parameter list looks kind of crazy, crazy world, but we have the input rectangle here. And we have the output rectangle here. Or in other words, I guess they're both inputs. But this is the source rectangle, and this is the destination rectangle. We have an inclusive rectangle, and we're passing them in as individual input parameters rather than creating a struct for the input for the uh, source and destination rectangle. Now, you could argue that maybe that this is a bad idea and this is ugly or whatever. I do not care. I have a simple way of writing code. And I don't want to create a struct on the fly, pack it with data, and then have to unpack it when I can just um, do this weird ass formatting here. Okay, so we haven't written much code for this downscaling code yet, but let's go over what we do have and explain the basics of how it's going to work. So we have the source width and height of the image that we're going to downscale. And then we have the destination width and height of the the uh, resulting image, right? The resulting smaller image, it's width and height. This is the destination pixel X and Y. And here is where we calculate the source width and height and the destination width and height. So we just take the inclusive rectangle bounds and we minus the bigger number from the smaller number and we add one because it's an inclusive rectangle. So imagine if uh, it was a one by one rectangle and both of these were zero. Well, that would be a one by one rectangle, not a zero by zero, hence the plus one. For the destination rectangle, same idea. We take the upper bound minus the lower bound, right? The bigger number minus the smaller number, and then we add one to get the width and height of the destination rectangle. We want to make sure that the source width and height is greater than the destination width or height. If that is not the case, then we're not actually downscaling. So uh, we'll throw this error that says either the source width or the source height is not greater than the destination width or height. And then here's our assert power of two calls. We want to make sure that 
the input and the output are powers of two because we do everything with powers of two and we're doing MIP map, so everything should be a power of two. So let's assert that constraint. So the source width, source height, destination width, and destination height, they all should be a power of two. If they're not, we have these error messages to uh, crash the system. Here is where we're going to do our down sampling loop. Right now, we don't have any logic. We're just looping over the destination. And the reason why we're looping over the destination pixels rather than the source pixels is because um, otherwise, well, it's just easier this way. It's just easier this way. Um, there could be some other considerations, but mostly it's easier to do it this way. And... Why is it easier to do this way? Well, it might make sense if I actually go to this diagram and, and you can look at the diagram. Okay, So here is our little diagram. And imagine that you have a source image. And that source image is 8 by 8 pixels. So it's these little, it's these little guys right here, right? And we want to take this 8 by 8 pixel image and we want to scale it down to 2 by 2 pixels. How are we going to do that? Well, we take a... We take a destination coordinate, so let's say this is our destination coordinate, and then we get we average every single valid sample point that this destination coordinate is overlapping over, and it's overlapping over all these coordinates on the source image. So here is the source image um, pixels right here the, for the source width and height, and then uh, here is the dest. Actually, that's not quite right. Uh, and this is the destination. Right, so this is one pixel here. We're gonna take we're gonna take four by four pixels and turn it into one by one pixel, right? Because we're taking an eight by eight image. We're taking an eight by eight image. Sorry, we're taking an eight by eight image and turning it into a two by two image. Okay, so let's uh, look at that math. So let's look at that one pixel. So we're gonna take this pixel in the top left corner and inspect how the math works a little bit more. So we have this. And we want to turn it into one pixel. So we know that these four pixels, if we average them all out, it's going to be 151. Well, how do I know that? Because I shoved all these calculations into a calculator. So we add everything up and we divide by 16 in this case because a 4x4 four four grid of pixels is 16 pixels total. It's actually 151.5, but we're going to truncate the number. We're not going to worry about do we round up, do we round down. We're not going to do math rounding rules. We're just going to completely truncate because that's easy. And I, I, do, I don't care about one little up or down, you know? Okay, so let's go back to where we were in the code. And so that's how this is eventually going to work. But we've added enough code for this video, so we're not going to add any more in this video. In the MIPWASP MMI function, so the function that is creating the MIP maps for a current master memory cell, identifying that master memory cell by index, right? So we're inputting the master memory cell index here. This function is the one that's going to call this downscaling function. So if we look at this function and we look down in here through all this code we wrote, here's the final step, the downscale copy paste. So this should be inside of a loop, and indeed it is. So here's our loop, and if we go up here, we can see the ME9LA3. So we might want to make a note here that we're in a loop and say something like, you know, next um, ME9, comma, LA3, right? It was ME9 and LA3, right? Yes, it was. So we could make a little note of that, and that would make it a little bit easier to keep track of this because, you know, everything's nested all crazy crazy. And then we can also make a note of what uh, what video we made this edit on. So 296, but now we're on 298, so let's put a 298 here. Let's just add that little change there. I think that'll be a little bit helpful that we just add this so we know what the hell is going on here. So this is definitely happening in a loop for every single layer and every single MIP map exponent that is non-zero. And you can see the source rectangle here and the destination rectangle here. And we calculated these source and dust rectangles in the previous video, 297. Okay, let's keep on going. So here's what we did previously. And here's the diagram you already went over. And here is what we did in this video. So all we did was begin work on the downscaling function. It is not finished yet. And then we also created a power of two helper function. So hopefully that explains what we've done. We're at about 10 minutes now, so it's time to get out of here. 
You've been on this playlist, the 10 minute per video playlist. If you want a shorter description, you can go to this playlist. You can get the source code here, you can email me here. And with that said, you have been on video number 298. So like, subscribe, and send money in the mail.